I'm a 12 year old girl and I believe in the supernatural. But I haven't really experienced it before, at least not until I went camping. So a couple of weeks ago I went to an overnight camp for a week with my sister who's 10. It was a girl only camp too. It was your ordinary usual camp. And it was actually pretty fun too. They had activities that we could all do and I chose archery and kayaking. Sounds fun, right? Well, it was. Until night came, that is. We went to bed around 10 on the usual night. Our chalet leader would always go to the Red Roof building, which is where we would shower, use the bathroom and brush our teeth before bed. I having had many of my personal belongings stolen before, always kept my toiletries in the cabin. And around 10 o'clock at night, I would always have to walk down to the Red Roof building and then back to my chalet again. I would often do this alone, since my bunkmates were more trusting in others than I. And when it's pitch black outside, and my flashlight keeps flickering on and off repeatedly, plus being all alone by myself whilst everyone else is brushing their teeth, I am terrified. I kept expecting a monster to come out and snatch me away, never to be seen again. But this obviously didn't happen. The moon shone down on the lake that we'd swim in during the day, and that only added to my fear. As the camp was basically in the middle of nowhere, anyone and anything could attack us. And mind you, we only had leather flaps to shelter us from the outside, so you could probably see the problem there. Moonlight had always comforted me before, but when it's shining off the surface of a lake, it didn't feel that nice anymore. Now comes the part where I tell you of my encounter. It was on the second night that this happened. As usual, I woke up in my sleeping bag. But instead of silence surrounding me, I am greeted by the sound of a little girl giggling. I immediately froze, dread pooling in my gut. Once I was able to move, I peeked up out of the sleeping bag, as I always kept one flap open as I slept. And it was there when I saw her. She looked to be around eight or so, with her long brown hair hanging down from her in a creepy way. Her eyes were only black, endless orbs, and her skin a very pasty white, almost as white as the moonlight that shone down on the lake surface. Her head would peek down from the roof, as if she were kneeling on top and then looking down. She would grin and giggle, her head would go back up, and the process would repeat. This happened nearly every night I was there, and it scared the hell out of me. Frankly, I don't want to know anything about the camp's history. I know I wasn't imagining what I saw, but I just don't want to believe that what I saw was genuine. If I ever go to stay in camp again, I'm going to make sure that no one had died there before as I would hate to have a repetition of the experience. I am currently 22, and I have always experienced paranormal events in my life. It could have something to do with me being pronounced medically deceased for a few minutes as a child. But anyway, my house is made up of three floors. The attic, the first floor, and the basement. My oldest sister, at the time, lived in the basement with her family. My parents and I lived on the first floor, and my brother slept in the attic. This event happened to us on a school day. I believe I was around the age of eight or nine, and that day, my older sister decided not to take my niece and I to school. Only the three of us were home, so we were just watching Unsolved Mysteries in the living room. And a few hours later, one of my sister's friends came over to try and sell her some stuff from Avon. As they were browsing through the product selection, my niece and I were playing dolls nearby, and everything was fine. This was until we began to hear a noise coming from upstairs. We listened attentively, and we could clearly hear the kitchen chairs moving back and forth from the first floor. 
almost as if they were being dragged. Seeing as no one was upstairs, everyone in the room fell silent. And we looked at each other with terror in our faces. If someone had broken in, they clearly were too oblivious to the noises that we were making downstairs and were being not subtle at all. My sister asked me if Jose had gone to school today. I nodded my head and said that he did, confirming that we saw him leave in the morning with his friends. We stayed quiet for a few minutes to see if we could hear any movement coming from upstairs. But as we waited, there was nothing. No footsteps, no talking, no noise whatsoever. We were sure of what we had heard, so my sister told me to go check. I hesitantly got up, and my niece followed Sue. We crept up the stairs holding hands. You could feel in the air that something was not right. We got to the last step and opened the door. It was absolutely dead quiet. We turned the corner where the kitchen table was and all of the chairs were pushed out and in the wrong places. We looked around the kitchen in terror. There was no one, so we quickly decided to return them to their place and push them back in. Afterwards, we searched all of the rooms on the first floor, underneath the beds, the closets, the boiler room, everywhere, and we never managed to find anyone. But the moment we reached the attic, I felt a very uneasy feeling. I couldn't see anywhere that anyone could hide. We had a quick look around before I took my niece by the hand and told her that we needed to go. We went down the stairs as fast as we could and slammed all the doors behind us. As soon as we got back down, I began telling them about how we'd clearly seen the chairs had been moved, when all of a sudden, we hear childlike footsteps running from the kitchen to the living room above our heads. And I was not about to go back upstairs to check things out. So my niece and I stayed in her room until my parents arrived from work. As for my sister, she never went to check it out. But until this very day, you will sometimes hear something or someone walking around in my house with no visual explanation as to what. In my family, there are four girls and four boys. At the time of the story I'm about to tell you, there were five girls and two boys at home. The fifth was our eldest adopted sister, which we had met not long before this incident. The story begins when an aunt of mine was staying with us. She was an alcoholic and we were specifically told to not let her outside the house, no matter what excuse she gives you. Well, the oldest let her out and she ended up in hospital that night because she went to a lounge and ended up passing out. She passed away not long after that. And after she'd passed, things started going on in the house. Things would begin to move, doors would get latched, and blankets would fly back at us with no one on the other side. My third older sister was a neat freak as a kid. And me and my younger sister would take turns asking her if she would swap beds with us for a night. One night in particular, I was probably around the age of eight or nine, and the house we lived in was nice. It had a finished basement, where my eldest adopted sister D, and my third oldest sister, who we will call K, slept. This night in particular, K had gone out, but I was unaware that she hadn't come home yet. I then asked D if I could sleep on her bed for the night, and she said sure, so I made my way downstairs. During the night, I woke and the basement was dark. All I could see were silhouettes of things from the moonlight shining through the basement windows. I looked over at Kay's bed. She looked like she was completely well snuggled in her bed. This was quite reassuring. So I went back to lie down, and as I lay there, I looked beside me, and there was a huge black figure standing beside the bed. 
I covered my head with a blanket and started saying Our Father and Hail Mary over and over and then I thought to myself that this isn't working. Then I felt something on my stomach. I slowly pulled the blanket off my face and saw it lean towards me, terror gripped me, to a point where I couldn't yell, scream, breathe or move. I don't know how, but in my zombie-like state I got up and walked slowly over to the steps, slowly walked up them and whatever it was, was right behind me. I could feel it on the back of my neck. I got up to the top of the stairs and slowly turned to see if it was still behind me. It wasn't. So I ran as quickly as I could to my parents' bedroom. I was so hysterical. Nothing made any sense to my mother as she tried to calm me down. Finally, I calmed down and I went to sleep on my other sister's bed. I got kicked for the rest of the night in that bed, but I didn't care. It was better than being in that basement. I was really worried for Kay, but in all my panic and in all my tiredness, I collapsed. When I woke up the next morning, I wanted to make sure Kay was okay. I asked my mother if anyone had seen her, and she told me that she was going to stay around a friend's house and wasn't going to be home all night. My stomach dropped. Who was sleeping in her bed? I grew up in a country home, right beside a well-known haunted site in a little town in the province of Quebec, Canada. I was a toddler at the time, but I am told that there would be frost sometimes on the interior walls of our room, and that a few times, when my parents would put me for a nap, I would be too quiet for quite a long time. When my parents would come in to check up on me, my entire room would be a complete mess. Drawers would be pulled out, clothes would be scattered all over the place, toys flung across the room. But when they'd come in, I would be amused and laughing, and in my crib. You have to remember that there would be no way for a child to get out of the crib, mess up the place, and then get back in. My parents were obviously not amused, but incredibly freaked out. A few years later, my parents would see a lady with no expression on her face, long dark hair, staring at my father straight in his eyes in the bedroom doorway. When that happened, both my parents freaked out and jumped up to try and confront the lady. But when they approached her, she would disappear. In my parents' utter disbelief, they would talk to each other just to make sure that they had seen her and every time they confirmed that they had. The problem is, every time they saw this lady, not long after, my father would have a heart attack. The first time this happened, no one thought of anything. But seeing as the third time they saw the lady, my father had another heart attack, they were starting to see a pattern. We moved out a few months after that. It still creeps me out to this day. Was it her causing the heart attacks? Or was she giving us a warning of what was yet to come? Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. We're so close to that 5k guys, which means we're nearly at competition time. <gasps> oh no. Why is the subscribe button red? Oh, that means it's embarrassed because you haven't subscribed yet. Oh, oh dear. Okay, um, just click it. Okay. Oh, oh good. Oh, now that you've done that, the button feels much better. Trust me, I'm a doctor. So if you like the video, feel free to like and share as it really helps me out. And this video was only made possible by all the subscribers who kindly shared their stories with us. So a huge thank you to all of you guys and everyone who watched this. Remember, you can also email me your creepy experience to my email or submit it to darknessprevails.org. Both of these can be found in the description below. But please remember to give me your consent. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to have a bit more interaction with me. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.